Hello, everyone, to this episode of Behind the Curtain with Majestic Theater. I'm Carly, and I'm really going to be hanging out backstage and fielding all of your questions for our Majestic board tonight. So tonight's show and all of our other Behind the Curtains you can find over at MajesticTheater.com or at our YouTube channel. So you can, you know, share with your friends or, you know, maybe hopefully watch this show again. But we also have a recording of Danny's latest play titled The Lady Slipper. So you can go ahead and watch that and give us some feedback. Down below, if you want to participate, is our live chat, so you can send any questions and comments you have down there. Or if you just want to give us some general feedback, you can email us at info at majestictheater.com. But tonight we have quite the Brady Bunch. So we have Danny, of course, <laughs> <laughs> Todd, Chris Thompson, Marie, and Emily. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. Yeah. All right, where do we lose Marie already? Oh, she was on a cell phone, so maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully she'll check back in later. She'll check back in. Hey, uh, thanks for tuning in once again uh, to another uh, episode of Behind the Curtain at the Majestic. I thought this would be kind of interesting for uh, folks out there to – there she is. Hey, yes, Marie. I'm back. <laughs> to uh, have a chance uh, – because everybody gets to see my face all the time, you know, but, but – uh, uh, everybody doesn't always get a chance to to see the rest of the people that help keep this uh, thing happy and healthy and, and running, although we happen to be closed up right now like so many <laughs> other theaters. But uh, anyway, and, uh, you know, I should also mention we're, I think, going to take a little bit of a hiatus uh, from things, although we do have uh, coming up next week on uh, the 10th, is that next week? I think um, November 10th, we are doing a reading uh, with uh, an ensemble of really terrific, majestic actors. They're uh, reading all of, not all of, but uh, you know, selected pieces from my playwriting workshop, which concluded uh, just uh, this um, last night, actually, Wednesday night. So um, that's really interesting. They've done some great, great work and uh, you might want to tune in for that. And uh, who do I see here? I see we have Zoya watching. And she mm -hmm. says, hello, Emily. Hey, Zoya. <laughs> Good to see you. Oh, we all miss New York, I think. <laughs> yeah. So um, where do we? Where should we start? You know, what What would be interesting for folks tuning in to to, uh, to to learn about the majestic. I mean, do we go way back to the early days? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I, I, I gave I gave uh, Carly a bunch of pictures. Where's that first one of in the in the the alley? What's there? It is. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's what the alley looked like when we first did back in '95. That amazing. We create that entrance. Cut a door through the brick wall and you know we had homeless people camping out down at the end of the alley and there's god it's hard to remember huh that's you yeah <laughs> the beginning of the renovation in there <laughs> i was thinking of that um when the weekend we got the keys to go in I went in and helped Greg Neffinger. He was, he, and we opened up the backstage doors and we just started dragging things out and throwing them in the dumpster. <laughs> what a mess. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Remember um, our, uh, oh, there's, uh, there's beginnings of things with beginnings of the stage. Yeah. And uh, a kind of a mock up of a, of a set just uh, so people coming in to visit could get a, begin to get a sense of things. The, um, you know, I remember that uh, Nancy Coates, and I hope Nancy's going to be able to, to join us. Uh, we'll see, maybe not, but uh, she's one of our original board members, and she was a professor out at Westfield State University at the time a in the uh, business department. And she arranged uh, for us to to have a, a couple of interns for one entire semester. And we tasked uh, those two interns with finding us a space that uh, we could uh, we could 
develop into a permanent venue. And so they hunted all over West Springfield. We want we pretty much wanted to stay in West Springfield because of the sort of central location. And um, you know, so they would God, they looked at places over on Memorial Avenue and over uh, off of Union Street and you know all over the place. And they happened to be in the assessor's office one one afternoon, and he dragged him over to the window, which sort of overlooks our backstage door, and pointed down there. And you know, and he said, uh, you know, there's uh, still part of that theater left in there, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was true. There is still part of the theater. What had happened is uh, apparently the Majestic uh, closed its doors finally as a movie theater, I, I guess back in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, the, the property got sold and then developed into commercial office space. And there were two offices out front uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in the first floor and two offices upstairs on the second floor. And then the, literally the back half of the building was just kind of abandoned and left empty. And that's what, uh, that's what we, we took over in 1995. Um, it was an interesting project and it took us uh, two years, a lot of sweat equity to, to uh, build it and get the doors open. But it was an adventure as we all kind of remember because we were all involved in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive find for interns. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They, yeah, they the were right good. Man. The right they had time. to do a report and you know do do all their that stuff to satisfy their course, you know. But yeah. yeah, it was good. But once we uh, and Nancy was was funny. I think when um, we had to get the key to. They had sort of a plywood door uh, to get into what's the theater now. And uh, the guy who had the delicatessen out front, do you remember that? Deli? Yep. Uh, Schneider's or something like that? Yep, yeah, Schneider's. And uh, forget his name, but he had the key to that. And I remember being there with Nancy and a flashlight and and, and – when he first opened the door and we looked in there and, you know, Nancy just thought I was like completely out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have to say, who else we got looking in here? Oh, JT's uh, looking in on us. Hi, JT. Hey, Kathy JT. Moody, she hi, is. Then, hi, Kathy. So, you guys got any questions for us, you know? Send them along, and we'll try and answer them as best we can. Ah, uh, so uh, what do you folks think? Uh, well, let's see. Let's go back. When did you all join the board? It kind of pretty much from day one, right? Essentially, I mean, Marie officially some years later, but I mean, you've been with us ever since day one, for sure. And, yeah. and Chris, so have you. Yeah. Um, I was doing a little bit of advertising for mm -hmm. a printing company. And she called me and said, hey, would you like to do some advertising for Danny's Theater over at the church? So that's how I started. And then obviously you purchased the building um, on Elm Street and we moved over there. And then I was out selling advertisement for the Buddy Holly, which I really knew nothing about, but I was telling everybody it was going to be a smash hit, and it was. And it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's like a couple years worth of stuff that we had to go on before before any of that happened, too. But but remember, uh, we, we kicked off, that was our very first Corvette raffle. Remember that, Todd? Yeah. Yeah, and um, the uh, the deal with our first Corvette raffle, I think it was uh, uh, limited to fifteen hundred tickets. Right, and at fifty dollars a ticket, that's because we actually needed a sort of a little bit of a substantial fundraiser. So I think we could buy chairs. <laughs> right, 
because we were we had the schedule to open, but we needed some seating, and uh, uh, so part of the deal was this fifty dollars a ticket is a really nice fifty eight Corvette, and uh, but you also got two tickets to the Buddy Holly story if you bought a raffle ticket. You know? Right, well, Kylie, there's a picture of that of the two tickets. I think I maybe sent you those the two. By hand, Marie will remember those. We actually created these tickets by hand with a rubber stamp for the date, and you had to check off the date. I mean, we had no ticketing back then. It was all paper photocopies of stuff. That's how simple it was. Yeah. Um, it really was. So, yeah, very simple stuff. Yeah, yeah. And... Um yeah, of course we opened with uh, with the Buddy Holly story, and that just became an event for sure. You know, we almost became a local destination. And I don't, I don't remember. I know we extended the run of that, and and um, probably a couple times or something. And then uh, you know, there they are. Here are the tickets, the original tickets. Yeah, and. Uh, you can see that little date stamp down there and it, one of those little rubber stamps and it had a wheel on it and you'd have to turn yeah. it. But Carly, if you go back to that, what's really fascinating is I think, I realized this looking at this today, there, I think there was only a total, you see how it says Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then two different times. I think we only did a handful of shows to begin with. Uh, you mean each week? Yeah, just a yeah. handful. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. And then, of course, um, we we became so identified with the Buddy Holly story. You know, we brought it back at the end of our the next year at the end of our first full season, and uh, then there is still plenty of demand for it. So we brought it back at the end of our fifth anniversary season. Right. And there was still demand for it. And we brought it back at the 10th season. And then we brought it back at the 15th season. And we thought, well, that's going to be it. And we, for the 20th season, I think we did Million Dollar Quartet in, in lieu of the Buddy Holly story. But now going into our 25th season, um, our plan is to open with the Buddy Holly story once again. So... <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I think I gave Carly. Carly, do you have one of those pictures? Like, I think it was picture one of the first pictures of the Buddy Holly story was opening. I don't know where that one was. That's some of those pictures. There it is. There we go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Look at that. You see Frank Manzi over there on the, the far right too, and and yeah. Ashley and wow. Yeah, Aaron over on the left. Look at them all. Yeah. And that's but Woody back there. Big bopper. But if you remember yeah. also, I think the paint was still wet on that <laughs> first show. Yeah. And um it was. Yes. And we were <laughs> tiling i think the ladies room because i had my daughter in there doing the last cleanup of the ladies room um so we were right under the wire for that opening show yeah. we, were very, yeah. we were very much under the wire and i don't think the i don't think the gold curtains got finished until uh, a couple uh -oh. days before either <laughs> oh. amazing didn't, didn't the chairs arrive that day or something <laughs> I don't know if it was that the day, day or the day before. Before the chairs arrived. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and do you know we're still using those same chairs? Yes. 25 yeah. years later, those, maybe I shouldn't have said that to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but we had them cleaned, right? Yes. yes. They have all been officially steamed cleaned. Yeah. Recently. <laughs> very recently. Yeah. <laughs> it's the subject of much more discussion, those chairs. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But they're good looking chairs. Yeah, and people, you know, some people have complained about the chairs and, you know, they're not fixed seating like in a typical theater where you have fixed seating. And that's essentially because we have to, uh, I don't know if folks are aware of this, but when we're in between shows, 
we have to literally pick all of those chairs up and restack them so that, you know, we have a big genie lift that travels around the inside of the theater so that we can get all the way up to the lighting grid and, you know, rehang and refocus all of our lighting instruments. So, uh, so the, the chairs have to be a little, little portable rather yeah. than fixed, but yeah. still have them, still ori the original chairs. Right. But we've added to those because we've added seats. Oh, yeah. Throughout the year mm -hmm. and expanded many times. I don't know if you ever took a number of how many times we added a section here, a section there, a balcony, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. lots of additions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done a number of expansions for sure. Um, you know, I think our original head count was 165. Uh, something like that, and now we're uh, 229, 230. Um, yeah, so oh, different kind of expansions. Yeah, I remember Danny when the big header was brought in for the balcony, and we were yeah. all holding on to it upstairs in the balcony. Do you remember that? I, I do indeed. Yeah, yeah, a huge micro lamb. Uh, a beam, yeah. Beam, right. Yep. That was still there. <laughs> still holding up the balcony. Still, still there holding up the balcony, yeah. Right. Uh, it's had a bit of a rest for the last couple of months, unfortunately, but yeah. yeah. But it certainly is still holding up the balcony. Right. So, what what do all of you think? Uh, has helped make the Majestic uh, success? Well, I think it's, as all the actors have said through all of these um, interviews, it's like a family. Mm -hmm. And it's not a job that it's nine to five and you leave after your, your shift is over. It's always been a very personal experience for everybody, no matter what you've done in the theater. And mm -hmm. um, it's something I know that I will always remember and uh, my family as well. Yeah. 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 Of course, the selections, Danny, thanks to you and Todd too, um, are always, always welcomed. You know, there's a lot of different, um, ideas about what people think in, uh, of live theater, but it's always fun. And, and you, and, and again, you see the same people each time, you know, each time a new show comes, you've got the same people that you're sitting near and you become friends with those people, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I know I've said um, for years, I mean, you know, you know what happens. Most people talk. About, so many people talk about what what happens in the theater, what happens on on stage, and and um, you know, Todd and I kind of have this division of labor. You know, we have this wall <laughs> that divides the the performance area from the the front of the house where the box office and the, and the cafe is. Um, but you know, I've always. Uh, Felt and, and and Todd is always 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 uh, reinforced this notion of, of of good customer service. Uh, so and it begins when you know people first walk in the door and walk up the ramp, and we you know they get their tickets and we hand them a playbill and that kind of thing, and then they get a chance to spend a little bit of time in the cafe, you know before we open even open the doors to the theater, and. Uh, you know, the for for me, that's always been so important. Oh, is that your Graham, Todd? Yeah, I that one in just so people could see you with a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. I think our, our audience, you know. That's what, my grandmother, Asu. Look at that. Good for her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, our audience is so, I think, um, so well treated before that we even open the doors of the theater and before they even come in to see a show that, uh, you know, they're, they're in a good place. And, you know, I think that's contributed 
a, a lot to uh, to whatever success we've enjoyed uh, overall at the theater. You know. They're part of the family as well. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. And you know Katya, who's been with us since almost day one, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know people. She's on a first name basis with uh, most of our subscribers. You know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. It's all those people that people don't see yeah. uh, on a regular basis. You know, uh, you know, we got Barbara taking care of all the accounting functions and Diane and box office functions and all the box office staff and all the behind the scenes people and all the people. And think about all the great people in the cafe that when you walk over are so happy to see you when, when you come up to ask for something, a beverage or whatever. It's great. It's all that service that we're talking about. It's all part of that family, like Marie and Chris said, and Annie said. It's you feel good, you you feel welcome, and um, and I think people really appreciate that that they're coming to a place that they feel uh, they're part of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. They do. I think feel a part of it. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, even our we have this great subscriber base, uh, very very loyal. And uh, you know, I think they they have a sense of ownership in the theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, some years ago, you'll you'll remember this, Todd. I think we did a four play subscription package, and then in in uh, usually January or December, January, you know, we did a smaller series called the Actors Choice Series, um, which were kind of smaller plays, a little more offbeat kinds of things. They were shorter runs. I think there were maybe two-week runs as opposed to a six-week run. And um, we, we did that for a few years. But then we got to a point where we had um, so many subscribers. And they, uh, you know, if they were interested in coming to see one of the Actors' Choice plays, you know, like Driving Miss Daisy, which was a very popular play. Um, but they couldn't always get their seats that they were used to, their subscribers. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be mad at us because they yeah. couldn't. Right. So uh, right. ultimately, we abandoned that actor's choice. There's, there's Driving Miss Daisy, yeah. There's Driving Miss Daisy, yep, yep. And so, yeah. Julian Somewhere in that oil is Dylan Reich. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, wasn't wasn't one of that first actor's choice ones? Wasn't that uh, Paul Robeson with Floyd Patterson? I believe I so. That, that was one of them. Was that yeah. actor's choice thing? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was, and yeah, that was a great great thing, and it blossomed into more and more people wanting to see more and more shows, and we had to accommodate them with the number of seats we had. We had to expand the number of weeks that each show ran. Yeah, right, right. It's I think we all you always kept it very interesting because everything was changing, whether it be the plays, the physical layout of the theater. I mean, the beautiful we used to actually have artwork that was related to the show, actually, mm -hmm. that had some connection to the show. Yeah, and so there was always something new for the people coming. Yeah, yeah, very great. It's you know, I do remember uh, the uh, first uh, the first uh, time we did Paul Robeson with Floyd Patterson. You know, his his dad, who was the heavyweight boxing champion mm -hmm. of the world, yeah. had never uh, had never seen his son perform because his parents divorced when he when Floyd was I don't know. 10 or something like that, you know, so, um, and uh, he managed to talk his dad into coming to the Majestic to see him in, in uh, uh, Paul Robeson, and I just remember uh, the champ walking down, our entrance was at the alley at that point, right. you know, walking, walking down the alley, and, you know, he was, and he was like the quietest, so, yeah. so, so soft-spoken you know, really nice guy. I remember his shaking hands with him, and he had hands like they were the size of a catcher's mitt in baseball. <laughs> Huge hands. <laughs> but 
No, that was quite a thrill to have him come. He, he I think uh, he was seated up in the balcony, and you know, we got to introduce him to to the audience before the show started, and then afterward, a whole bunch of us went out and had dinner. I think we went to the Hookie Lao or something, but <laughs> that was pretty memorable. Yeah. But we also, when you're speaking about Paul Robeson, um, we did the student matinees for quite many years. Right. Yeah. Did we do it for Paul Robeson? I don't recall. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. 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 That I mean, brought children from you know the whole Western Mass area into the theater and exposed them to theater. So I just think that was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then the children's theater we started that as well, which even brought during the summer that became a huge success too. And yeah, right. Chris yeah. was worked a lot on those all of those productions and Steve <laughs> Pettit and Aurora and all those people and yeah and yeah, uh, before that um, um, band. Van and, and Van Megan. Somewhere there's a picture. There's some pictures of that stuff. Children's theater in there too. Somewhere. Here yeah. we go. Ah, there it is. <laughs> hey, uh, well, that was, that's Chris's baby. Yeah. Hold yeah. well, yeah. it up again, Chris. Yeah. Well, there you go. That was our first season. Oh, there. Nice. Robbie. There's Robbie over here. I don't know where I'm pointing. Right there. Robbie. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. With a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question from Zoya. She says, have you been hearing from your subscribers and what have they been saying? <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you that we've gotten a lot of emails from people asking us when are we going to open and saying they miss us, um, especially as we approach the holiday season. They're very much missing our traditional home for the holidays production. Um, so we have heard from them. Yeah. We have, and you know, especially this home. For, yeah. When did the Home for the Holidays start? That whole production has been along for I don't know what time. year. What year yeah. that started? Yeah, I don't know. We lose track of time. Yeah, I mean, we have we've had a couple of different hosts right over the uh, for yeah. that. that uh, oh, there is, uh, there's home. Is that, that's home for the holidays? Yeah. That's home for the holidays. Yeah. There's Mitch. And I think it's Amy Wrist, Ben, yeah. Ashley. Yeah. But that's, that, that's become, that is an amazing uh, production unto itself. Every holiday season sold out. Yeah. yeah. Sold out, completely sold out. And we've gotten to the point where we're now doing what? 15 16 performances at least something like that yeah yeah we can't we we can't get enough into our schedule so many right. people are saying when is it coming we're gonna miss on. we're gonna miss one for the holidays i said can't find no, about I, it right now yeah. yeah i mean it's been hugely popular oh, uh, it is. It, but i remember one year we tried um you know, our our season, our calendar breaks down in such a way that with our main stage shows, you know, one we have two shows in the fall, and, and uh, the fall kind of going into you know first before the before the new year, and one of those shows can be a six week run, and one of those shows can be a seven week run, and so we kind of flip them around a little bit. But one year we just did the two fall shows with six week runs so that we we'd have an extra week for the holiday show. And we opened the holiday show, I think like right after Thanksgiving and it didn't, it, it was nowhere near as popular, you know, and I think people just were not in that holiday mood at that point. And it was just a week, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, so trying to, you know, typically we'll we'll open the holiday show around the twelfth of December, something like that, and, and uh, uh, run it right up to the twenty third, I think. Right? Was yeah. our cutoff the twenty second? I think 
Ben makes us cut off at the 23rd. <laughs> Maybe we could do a virtual holiday show. That'd be cool. What's that? Um, a What's virtual that? holiday show. Ah, I don't know. There's John and Paul. <laughs> yeah. We did... Um, I don't know if we talked that Todd and I met with the uh, with the health inspector what, what, about two weeks ago now, wasn't it, Todd? Yes. And uh, you know, technically, because we are in stage two of phase three. Correct. Yeah, correct. We could technically open the theater, but. Uh, there are so many restrictions. It's it's kind of unbelievable. Um, you know, first we'd have to do social distancing, which would kind of drop us from 229 seats to 47, as we laid out the theater on a social distancing basis. Then uh, they don't want an intermission, no intermission, and then. Um, no singing. But, no singing. But if you do sing, uh, the singer would have to be 25 feet away from anybody in the from the first row of the audience. So, which puts people back to the like the fourth row of the theater uh, for a singer. And then um, no no woodwind instruments. No, you know, like a clarinet or a saxophone. No brass instruments, like a a uh, trumpet or a trombone. I mean, they're just uh, people in the audience would have to have to sit in their chair and and and, and be masked up. Uh, you know, there's just like so so many restrictions. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. So all, all the things that we were saying is the the real great things about the theater that it was so intimate and so friendly which is, was our biggest asset, as I say now, has become our biggest liability. It really has because of this situation that we're in right now. We, All of that intimacy is something we can't overcome. We can't. You know, you think about access to all of the, to the cafe, to the bathrooms, to the seating area. At this point, we just need to kind of continue to stay where out. we are until we can we get into phase four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you know my own f philosophy is is uh, you know without a without an audience there in front of you, you don't really have the theater. You know, so to do something, I know a lot of people are trying to do virtual things, and they just they just kind of I, I I call it faux theater. You know, that makes no sense to me. And, uh, you know, the audience is, um, is integral to having theater, period, you know. Without it, the best you have is a rehearsal. Right. Well, yeah. so maybe, maybe, maybe we should reminisce about our favorite shows at the Majestic Theater. <laughs> Good thinking. All right. So I, I'll go. I'll start. My favorite one of all. My favorite one. I, I have to pick one is the gin game. Really? Yeah. I still think of the gin game, and I still think of Bev Brown's set where she got a trash, like a dumpster, dumpster, dumpster gin game right here, dumpster into the into the set. I don't know <laughs> he came into a dumpster on the set, and I thought that was great. Who are those two? The two actors in the gin game? Marjorie Shaw and Ken Tiger. Yes, yes. I that was my favorite. Yeah. All right, who's next? Anybody want to pick one? I like that. Well, mine's not a show, but it was. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> what? Go ahead. Mine's not a show, but it was part of our extracurricular, you might say, is when we had Rock King come from Cape Cod. Oh, and oh yes. He was yeah. a comedian on the Cape, and he had a big following here. Um, yes. uh, in Western Mass, and um, 
we might have had him three times at the theater. We had sold out shows. Oh, yeah. Um, he actually stayed at my house and lived with me for his time here in Western Mass. So yeah. um, Todd and I both have very fond memories of that. I did send some pictures to Carly, but I don't know if she has that. But Yeah. Um, yeah. May he rest in peace, Rock. I know. Right. He was great. He was yeah. so funny. Chris, how about you? Yeah, I, I was saying I loved that Jim came too. It was it was the first show I designed. <laughs> oh, no but, kidding. Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's great. I didn't remember that either. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's so many that I love. I I love the musicals, I guess, because then I can tap my foot along and hum and nobody hears me. <laughs> but, um, oh, gosh. I I love 39 Steps. Oh, mm. you oh. did put that up. <laughs> there you are, Chris. There I am. Yeah. yeah. And little little Dan Robert. And Dan Robert. And yep. and um, what was that show? Is that Tom Dudzik play? Over the tavern. Over the tavern. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but thirty nine steps. I thought that was a summer show, but it was so fast moving and fun that I just I loved that one. Yeah. And Alfred Hitchcock. I, you know? I have two favorites. I liked um, the I, once I danced in one of the Buddy Holly story. Oh, situations. I yeah, don't remember. You were, one, you were a Buddy fan for a while. Yeah, I think that might have been the end of season one, the second time we did it, but I'm not positive. Yeah, I think so. And that was super fun. It's like I'm, it's a dance party every night for me, fairy teenage girl. Like you can't really ask for anything better. That was great. And then, but of shows that I wasn't in, um, I loved Sideshow. Do you guys remember that one? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I like that one. I love the songs in that. Yeah. We, we still have, uh, we, you know, uh, we still have requests to bring that show back, oh, to yeah. bring Sideshow back. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that, that was, I, I sent I sent a picture to Carly. I don't know if you'll be able to identify it as Sideshow, but it looks like there's a canvas tent in the back and such. Yeah. Uh, it actually is a picture of the twins, the co-joined twins. Oh, right. Who was who were those two? That was um. There they are. There they are. Yeah, yeah that's sideshow. <laughs> so that's uh, uh, Amy Rist and Joni. And Christine. There's Christine. Yeah. And Christine, and there's Greg Wolf on the end. And, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Um, oh jeez! I forget. I forget his name. Yeah. That's how you met. Actually, that was how this. I believe the summer concert started because that's where we met um, Kenny Labelle. He built a tent for us. Yes, yeah. and that's kind of like when we started oh. to talk a little bit more seriously about doing summer concerts because Kenny Labelle, who did the tent for that sideshow yeah and then he started the the diamond collection remember the all of those summer concerts yeah, yeah right right yeah kenny and his brother had a uh had a business called brothers covers and and they sort of custom made boat covers you know so you could store your boat in the winter and keep it covered and and so they had a shop over uh in back in one of those big old warehouses, uh, Union Street, and you know I needed a, a circus tent, and, you know, and I said, hmm, maybe so. Kenny can sew up a, a circus tent, and right. yeah, he did, he did. But that's when we also started talking about, you know, he's just been this huge Neil Diamond fan, and yeah. you know, he was putting together a CD, and could he do a, a a CD release concert in the summer? And you know, I think that really kicked off our summer concerts yeah, yeah. does it how about a, how about a favorite concert who has a favorite concert some of the summer all right i'll go first since i went the first around again 
So my favorite summer concert was Mingo Fish Trap. Oh yeah. A band that I had heard for years and I had found them on the internet and I was able to make contact with them. They're out of Austin, Texas. And they were ended up back, this is maybe what, at least 10 years ago. They used to tour in the summers up to New England and was able to convince them that they should play the Majestic Theater. Um, and it was the most amazing thing to me to find that I had was able to find a band that I had fallen in love with and found an ability to get them and have them perform at the Majestic was just like a dream come true. And uh, it was an amazing show. They were an amazing band, Mingo Fish Trap. So that was my favorite summer concert. Are they still active? Do you know, Todd? Somewhat. Uh, the uh, They still do a kind of a live streaming thing occasionally. The lead singer from uh, the band does occasionally, but I, I don't. I haven't seen them out performing. Hey, um, M, did you say what your second show was? You, you mentioned two shows. Oh. Oh, you mentioned Sideshow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buddy and Sideshow, yeah. Yeah. Who's got another favorite concert? Anybody? No, but I, I liked Golf the Musical, too. That was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. That was that fun, was, yeah. That was a summer show, wasn't it? Yeah. Was summer show, yeah. 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 <laughs> El Grande de Coca-Cola. Oh, I was yeah. just thinking that, Danny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That one was that one was a, an interest. That's where we wait a second. You know that we actually then took all the seats out That's of the right. theater. Remember yeah, that and like made that all those cafe parts. tables. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. So we had to sell uh, like uh, table seating. That was our Boston pops. <laughs> right. That was an interesting go. Yeah, Kathy Ludy <laughs> says her favorite summer concert is Lisa Carter as Cher. Yeah, that was a good one. I mean, they've been uh, um, in incredibly popular. And although, uh, you know, I, for years I tried to, uh, you know, her, when she was first doing the shows, she was doing it with tracks. And uh, eh, not a big fan of track shows, to be sure. And I tried to convince her to bring in a band. And finally, she's she's now doing all of her shows with a band. So oh. makes it makes a huge difference. Yeah. But, um, Dad, what was the show where one time after intermission, um, a couple from the audience left and they walked out and they said something to you in the alley, not knowing it was you? I don't know. <laughs> remember this? They said something like, it's something along the lines of like, oh, what a show. And you were like, oh, I, you know, I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and what can, yeah. what can you say? I do remember, Todd, you'll remember this. Uh, this was um, we were doing trying uh, with uh, with JT and Sandra Blaney, two oh, character yeah. play, and um, I remember I think we'd been open about a week or so, and and you know I remember the mailman being at the box office and the mailman dropping off a, a stack of letters and uh, inside were two things kind of like addressed to me. And so the first one I opened up and it was uh, somebody complaining about about trying. And they, they just thought it was the most boring thing ever. And, you know, please don't ever do anything like that again. And nah, 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 going on and on and on. And of course, it, they didn't sign it because, you know. Right. People, yeah. <laughs> people oftentimes don't. Don't dare sign their names to it. <laughs> but then the the I, the very next envelope I opened up, and, and this was so uh, ironic in a way. Like the very next envelope, where there's a letter in there from another couple who had seen trying, and they were just raving about it. And I remember them yeah. saying it was the best thing that they'd seen since they'd. Uh, seen uh, Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy in the original production of The Gin Game. Uh -huh. So it's like, you know, here we go. So what are we doing with these two things? And and Todd says, I've got an idea. And so he, he had them blown up to poster size, you know, and we put them on easels out in the lobby sort of side by side. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
How would they, what, what year was it that we put all the, the playbills up on the wall and had people vote for yeah. what they thought was their favorite? And it was amazing how, how like almost every play got votes. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. What, what year was that? I don't remember what anniversary we did that. Do you remember? But it wasn't, it, remember, we, we somehow they could like put their ballot like right with beside the playbill or something, we did that where they could actually, or they wrote what they thought was their favorite on a slip yeah. of paper and put it in a box. Right, right. But it was fascinating that there wasn't a play that we had done that wasn't somebody's favorite. So you could never judge or prejudge like who was gonna find one play versus another their favorite. It was yeah. everybody, something touched everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've always, always maintained that, you know, we well, we do a five-play season, right? And, you know, no one's going to hit a home run every, you know, with every every single play for every single person in the audience. And, you know, what might be uh, the favorite play for an audience member uh, is not the favorite play for the person that sits next to them, but and vice versa, you know? The, the the play that you might not really have uh, strong feelings about could be the you know the person that sits next to you every every eight weeks or something when the rotation happens you know is their favorite play so it's always a question of uh, supporting an entire season you know rather than uh, cherry picking one play over another or something you know yeah. But, yeah, it's yeah. uh, it is uh, it is kind of fascinating, you know. It is, and we and we still hear all these, you know, a variety of comments. Just that, even though we blew up those letters years ago, and two, you know, two different opinions, <coughs> we still hear opinions all the time. You know that, Marie, in the box office, one yeah. day somebody calls up and they're livid, and the next first day they call back, somebody else calls up, and it's the best show they've ever seen. So. <laughs> It's a tough go. It really is. Uh, I always found what was super interesting is like the art of designing the season and balancing it and like the play selection that goes into it to make sure like, you know, exactly to the point that no one's going to love every single show, but also just making sure you get a variety in what it is that's going on in a given season. Like uh, over the years, one of my favorite memories is always hearing about like, oh, dad saying, you know, the season's almost nailed down. I'm choosing between these few few plays. And it was always so fun to hear once the final five were picked what they're going to be. Yeah. It's a, you know, trying to, trying to come up with, uh, with, with five plays. I mean, there's a bit of a formula. I have to say that, you know, generally we do two musicals a year. Um, one of them will be a large cast musical and the other one will be a small cast musical. Typically, you know, generally we open the season with a musical and we close the season with a musical the second show is generally a comedy, you know, leading into the holidays. The third show in, in January, you know, might be a little bit more of an offbeat kind of show. The fourth show would uh, typically be, you know, an American classic, or a streetcar named Desire, you know, to kill a mockingbird, something like that. And so there's that formula for sure. And, um, and then just you know finding shows that fit that formula, and then being able to to uh, to get licenses for them, which is a whole process. You know, sometimes you're just dealing with Samuel French or Dramatist Play Service, but other times you're dealing with an agent, or um, sometimes you're just dealing with the author uh, directly. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting how, how these things all come together, but eventually they do. Eventually they they have to, you know. <laughs> There's another one. Uh, what was that show? Oh, my gosh. Uh, that's the one where the guys strip at the end. Yes. What the mm -hmm. heck is the name? The Full Monty. Full Monty. The Full Monty. Yeah. The Full Monty. That's the full Monty. Yeah. That one's a good one. 
that's always too. It's like um, we get comments on some of the the language, the vocabulary that's used in some of the shows that people aren't too happy with. So I know that's always an issue, Dan. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. You um, we're, we're you know we're not allowed to edit a script. Right. Um, and yeah, I know people have sometimes people have reactions sometimes, you know, right. what are you going to do? Right. You know? Yeah. It's all in, like you said, it's all in context. So right. it's, Oh, there's a good, that's um, stick fly. Stick fly. Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. I mean, we had language reactions there too. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. time. Well, that's one that I saw at the Huntington Theater, actually. Yeah, we and went down to see it, Marie. I remember right. you get, getting getting tickets for us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's good, Zoya. Very good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Theater is life. They hear it on the street. Yeah. Right. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah. Another fun memory was when we did, uh, we had a, a raffle and we had the show and the bus trip to Boston oh, to raise right. a little, yeah. <clears throat> raise a a little of times, bit of cash. And that yeah. was a fun time. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Yep. That was. And then, of course, we've had some 50-50 raffles to help out, right? Yeah. yeah, we're doing those during the summer. Those are those are good. Those are fun. Right. <clears throat> yeah. With the Danny dollars. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I guess I would be remiss if I did not did not push the this is our 25th Corvette raffle this year. Yeah. Um, and uh, we just uh, if you go out to our website or you go out to our uh, Facebook page, you can see some videos and other information stuff on the this year's raffle. You can order raffle tickets online. I, 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 I'm yeah. supposed to push yeah. this, I guess, right? No, um, yeah. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't remember that, uh, I, unfortunately I miss uh, Mike Atkin this time of year. I always do. Yeah. And in all those years, he helped support the raffle and worked so hard at making things happen. Um, and uh, so, if you want to support the theater, this is the time to do it. Buy a raffle ticket. There you go. It Thank is. you, Carly. That's what we need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. There's our website. Thank you, Carly. That's you can go and you can order a ticket right online. I think I saw JT make a comment. I think was was JT watching. Yeah, he's participating in the raffle. Thank you, JT. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen some orders come in from JT. Thank you. And then I, one other thing I should just do, I know Carly, you saw that picture early on about Dave Healy smashing the wall with a sledgehammer. I can tell you that that's one of my favorite memories is working with Dave Healy, may he rest in peace too. Yeah. All those years building things. And there was a picture that you, of him smashing down the wall that he had created. Yeah. There he is, there he is, there he is. There he is. Yeah. He create he built that wall and then he had to break it down when we renovated it, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Work. I remember that was great memories working with him, and then you'd break in the end of the day and you'd go across the street to Powers for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be any better. <laughs> and of course, we always made use of the cafe. There were many. Uh, memories of the local people. We've had weddings. We've had bridal showers. We've had oh, baby yeah. showers. We've had parties. Katya yeah. got married on the stage. That's yep. right. Yep. Uh, who else got married on the stage? We had others. Did we have others? No, was it I think Nikki Meldoni? Nikki. Yeah. yeah. Nikki Meldoni got married on the stage. Yeah. Right. Right. And then John. Um, oh, the engagement. Oh, that surprise um, engagement that one time. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple of engagements. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we had a lot of <laughs> bridal showers. 
Oh, what's that one? Uh, uh, that, no, that's oh. uh, that's the name of that flower. Uh, Magnolia. <laughs> no, the, what was that one? Wisteria. Wist no. Um, <laughs> I'm just guessing. With yeah, Sandra no, Blaney. Yeah. Sandra was in that show. Um, right. What's the name of that one? Ah, uh, forget. Sorry. <laughs> somebody, somebody I'll have will, to look through my books. Somebody will come up with that one. <laughs> I thought that was the name of the flower that was the name of that play. No. Um, no, it's not. Took place in Italy, I think, no? Yeah. Well, yeah. it starts in the, it starts in England, but then England. it moves to Italy in the second act. And, you know, um, ah. Enchanted April. Thanks, Zoya. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Enchanted April. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that Kate was, a was good in one. that, right? Kate Damon in that one? Yes. Kate was in yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Sandra. Yeah. Sandra, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Enchanted April. Yeah, some more photos to challenge us with, Carly. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what she can put up. We had a whole bunch from our. Uh... You guys are putting me on the spot. You're killing me. <laughs> All right. Well, we just figured we'll see what else we got. Oh, that's an early oh, that's one. one. That's from over at the church. Yeah, the baby dance. Uh, nope. Nope. No? That's not the baby dance. That's. Okay. Um, that's. Uh, it's a bar. It's the name of a bar. Um, Not the Spitfire Grill. <laughs> no, no, that was no. 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 I don't it's remember two, that one. Yeah, it's a two-hander. Um, hmm. I don't remember the name of it. That, that's a, that'll be the the seahorse. There oh, it is. Seahorse. There you go. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a good play. That's a good yeah. play. That's worth that's worth considering. You know, Bringing that one back? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. What else you got there, Carly? Ah. Oh, there's Dave. That's all my sons, right? Uh, no, I think that's uh, Death of a Salesman. Oh. So that's that's Ken Tiger with uh, Dave Healy, and I forget the other actor's name. The two sons. <coughs> yeah, it was Death of a Salesman, yeah. Yeah. We did All My Sons too, though. Didn't we do that? We yes. did, yeah. Yeah, we did both. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. We're, put, we're, putting, we're putting her under the gun. And there was another one we Oh, so I mean, trivia, though, figuring all of these out. Oh, holy cow. So I'd say right to left is Katya, Donna, and Lee. Tweedle <laughs> DD. I think that's Katya. Yeah. Really? To the right. What did, what did yeah. it say at the bottom? Tweedle D, 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 D. Three nitwits. <laughs> I think you got it right, Todd. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> There's an awful lot of stuff in boxes of memories, which thankfully Marie kept. The pack rat. I keep everything. We've got Marie. Marie kept it in files and all. Thankfully, it's all can be found in the filing cabinets on, in the basement on Baldwin Street. <laughs> right. I don't throw anything out. I don't know. You might have when I left, but no, just carted it over to Baldwin Street. <laughs> oh. It's on the shelves in the in the uh, new room, <laughs> in the material room. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What else you got there, Carly? 
<laughs> Todd, you gave me so many things. I don't know. Just throw any of them on, <laughs> any of them you want. They'll, right. Sure. Scroll, <laughs> scroll through them. Oh. Oh. There's little Megan Pinter. Is that open? He's not so right? little anymore. You know, do oh. helping me do a show opening. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. She she holds the record for the most 50-50 raffle tickets sold in a night. Wow. Yes, she does. She used to walk around the cafe and sell raffle tickets for 50-50 raffle on the on the summers. <laughs> she did a great job. Cutie. Yeah, she was. The other thing I recall was when every new show, when you were looking for props and furniture and everybody would be scouring their houses for different things and uh and then you know voila one day you're sitting in the audience and you go oh that rug was in my house <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. or those are my oars remember on golden pond oh yeah the oars that were above the beautiful fireplace oh that's to kill a mockingbird yeah, it's Emily. No, no, that's not Emily. That's oh. uh, uh, that was here. Emily was in oh. uh, over at the church. At the church. Mm -hmm. That's John Little and um, uh, Shelby Lashine. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Yeah. 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 This is this is Shelby too. This one. That's Shelby. Oh. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> right. Here. Is that Shelby? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> I look at the face, the name underneath the caption. Yeah. Well, wow. a lot of a lot of great memories. A lot of great memories. Yeah, a lot of great memories. A lot of great people. A lot of great people involved. A lot of great, great super audience. Great yeah. people participating. We can only hope and and pray that it comes back quickly. It'll it'll be here before you know it. I have faith that it will. I do too. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I went and voted today and had to go down to uh, City Hall in Westfield. And so I go to ch check in, and who's one of the poll workers there? Um, one of our subscribers. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, well. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. Mm. No more questions from anybody. How are we doing, Carly? We are we out of pictures or out of pictures? Um, almost out of time for the most part. And now, if you have a final question for everyone, they want to ask. Okay, we've gone through all the pictures. That's great. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we are. Uh, you know, our hour is winding down. I see Kathy Ludy. She says most interesting behind the curtain so far because of all the great memories. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Kathy. You have chimed in more times than I can count. So thank you for participating. Probably almost all of our behind the curtains. Yeah. yeah. Zoya as well. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of people who have chimed in and who've been with us, been with us throughout this whole journey. So. <laughs> Well, all right. Thanks for the memories. I guess Thank you, everybody. I guess we're signing Thank off. And it's not like we're just we're just going to take a little break. We're not really going anywhere. Right. Intermission. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. A long intermission. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> all right. Stay safe, everyone. All Thank right. You, Stay you safe too. and healthy. My best to you and your families. Thanks. Thank you for being here tonight. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Take right. care. Good night. Bye. Bye, Em. Love you. Bye. Bye.